Hi everyone, in this video we will be exploring integration services and we'll create our first ETL package to move some data from a file and upload it to SQL Server into our database. Let's open up Visual Studio. And let's also actually open up SQL Server Management Studio so we can have both. So the first thing I'd like to do is actually create a new table, just something that we can have as a placeholder to put some data in. Let's add it to our AdventureWorks database. So let's create a new table here. I will just copy and paste some code. We are going to call this table Rep Performance Target. So let's create this just to prove there's nothing in it. Empty table. In here, let's go to File, New, Project. And what we want to do is navigate to the Business Intelligence folder here, an Integration Services Project. And we have this because when we installed SQL Server Data Tools, we selected Integration Services. So that's why this is here. So let's call this just Demo ETL. Okay. And now we have this new window and we have this canvas here. We have some toolbox items over here. Over here we have a breakdown of what's called the solution and that has the, the packages. We'll have some connections, a bunch of other stuff. This is really basic just to get you going and to show how to do this. And then we can explore later a little more in depth. The premise of this package that we're going to build is it's going to grab information from a CSV file and then dump it into that new table that we just built. So let me show you the CSV file that I've created and I'll provide this on a GitHub page or somewhere that you can, you can get to it. Let's open this up. It just looks like this. It's really arbitrary information. Grab some names, revenue quarter or quantity revenue year. We're going to take this and we're going to put it into that table. So the first thing we need to do is be able to connect. It's kind of like in Report Builder when we connected to our data source. We need to establish connections here as well. So down here in Connection Managers, you can select right-click, New, Flat File Connection. And we can give it a name. Let's just say CSV Upload. You can call it whatever you want. Browse. And we will go to that location csv there it is open okay columns you can see a preview of it here and then one thing we'll want to do here is just make sure that the data types look good and we can actually just click suggest types and it'll It'll update these for us here. But what I'd like to do here, just for these two strings, let's change them from just string to Unicode string. Because sometimes you'll get an error. It'll have uh, converting the types Unicode, non-Unicode. So just let's just do that for, for this purpose here. All right, preview. It's getting the data, we're all good. Okay, so now this connection here is for getting that file location. And then the next thing we want to do is set the connection for the database and for that new table we just built. And what we'll do here is new OLEDB connection. So let's click new. And for the server, you can either click the drop down, but that sometimes takes a while. You could just type in your machine name and the instance, the SQL Server instance. In our case, it's demo database name, AdventureWorks. Again, this is pretty similar to Report Builder if you were following along with that one as well. Let's test the connection, succeeds. So now we are able to connect directly to this and we can do whatever we need to. And let's rename this to, let's get rid of the server name. I'm just going to call it AdventureWorks. 
All right, so now we're actually on the control flow page, this canvas here, and we can start to create our workflow. So let's take a data flow task here, drop it on here, and we will call this upload data. Now control flows are gonna have an extra layer here. So first thing we wanna do is grab the CSV file. There should be a flat file source flat file source. Drag this on here. We'll call this CSV file drop. Connection manager, it's already recognizing this. If it's if not, you can pick one. Columns. It sees the columns. Okay. So now this indicates this connection. It's taking that file. Now we need to be able to drop it into or upload it to that database table. Let's find OLEB, OLEDB destination. We can call this the name of our table, which is rep performance targets. And the way this works here is we just drag it to it. First off, we need to say, okay, it knows this, this is the database, but what table do we want to use? Where are we putting this? And we can look here, it will pull it, and this is the one we want, this new one we built. Fast load, it's just going to load that data in there, and that's it. Mappings. So for the ID, that's an auto-incrementing value. We're not concerned with that, so we're, not, we're going to ignore it. It recognizes these are the same, but it's not quite sure what to do here because technically it's not the same. So there's two ways to do this. You can just do a drop down here or you can actually drag and drop there, whatever you want. Year, okay. So now this is connected. If we go back to control flow, we have this task. If you, if you drill into it, you see both. So now let's actually test this out. We have something here. Let's open up SQL Server Management Studio. Again, right now, if we do this, there's nothing in it. But let's run this package. So let's click start. It's going, it, it already passed. It went through 58 rows, success, no errors. So now if we go in here, there we go, success. It now took that data from the file, connected to the database and uploaded it. So think about all of the different things you could do here. If you're getting data from a ton of different sources, from APIs from FTP locations, you can connect it and then dump it into a some sort of table that you have and then build a report off of it. And then you can automate all of these things. So this is where this becomes really powerful. You can start to really build out a pretty intensive database and, and get a lot of cool stuff done. The next part I want to show, just to add one more step here, let's say we want to actually truncate the data before we put it in. One of the things here we could do is execute SQL task. And we'll call this truncate table. So in here, we're actually putting just pure SQL and it's going to go right here. But first, we need to establish a connection. It's saying, where do we want to run this SQL? It knows it's an OLEDB connection type. Here's one that we have, so let's click that. And here we write the SQL. It's just copy and paste whatever you want. If you want to execute a store procedure, if you want to run just hard-coded SQL, whatever, you know, it, it's up to you. So here we'll say truncate table rep perf demo rep performance target. And just to test it out, I'm going to open this back up to make sure that the SQL is correct. Okay, so we're good. Okay. So now this is going to happen and I'm going to connect it. So this means it will truncate first and then upload it. So let's see what happens. All right, quick. The data is there again. And if we run it again, the same thing should happen. Truncate, upload, 58, 58.
let's get out of this debug mode and let's let's say we want to actually deploy this package let's we have it done it works when we test it and we want to put it onto our sql server now how do we do that first thing i'm going to rename this here let's call this demo package So if we click deploy, let's, I'll just show you what happens here. So server name, again, your machine name, and then the instance of your SQL server. Connect. And now it's asking here for a path. And we haven't really run into this yet. So let's click browse. And what this is saying here is we actually need to have an integration services catalog on the server. But we don't have that yet. We've never actually done anything with this up until this point. It says open the create catalog and, and build one. So we need to go back into SQL Server. And we'll do that. We need to give it a place to actually deploy this. So it said go here. If you try to expand it, it's nothing. Right click, create catalog. CLR integration must be enabled. Okay. The name, let's keep it the default. Need to give it a, a password here. In a production environment, this should be pretty secure, but for the sake of a demo, I'm going to make this capital P A S S W O R D exclamation point. Exclamation point. Password exclamation point. You can do whatever you want here. So let's say okay. And there we go. Now it built out. Our catalog now let's try again let's see if we can find it and it does here it is okay we need to make a new folder we'll call this uh just demo folder okay and now we can put this package into that folder next just the review here's what we're doing and deploy okay Close and that that should do it. Let's let's take a look. If we refresh, we have this demo folder under projects, and here's the package. So if you have multiple packages that you build and you want to put it under the same folder, you, it'll deploy it all there, and you can you can take a look at it. So that about does it for. The basics of creating an ETL package of integration services, there's really a whole lot of stuff that you can do with this. And I encourage you to keep learning and digging in and, and checking out the different transformations and the data sources and connections that you can do. And I'll probably create some more videos getting more involved with that. But at this point, we're going to move on from this. And the next part we're going to work on is analysis services, the third portion. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you at the next video.